Learning a new technology or framework can be utterly time consuming, unless someone points out a fast lane. There are in fact very few basics you have to know to gain a steep learning curve regarding React. In the next 9 minutes I'm going to explain the most important basics you have to know to get the full pace. The easiest way to get started with React is to utilize the create react app command. It takes a single argument that represents the name of the project. In our case we are also going to use the TypeScript template by adding dash dash template TypeScript to the command. TypeScript is just way easier to read and maintain. Once the installation is finished, we have a new folder called getFactApp, which is the name of the project we gave it. If we now type npm start, we see the default app the command created for us. All of this is stored within the source folder. For example, the content we just saw is represented in the app.tsx. If we replace this with our custom content, we see our custom content within our app. React allows a special notation that is called JSX or TSX in our case. JSX stands for Extended JavaScript. It allows mixing HTML and JavaScript. It is intuitive to use, which is why I'm not going to explain it. If you want to know more about this, check reactjs.org slash docs slash introducingjsx.html. React apps are usually structured by using components. Components are reusable code blocks that fulfill a specific need. In our example, we are going to write two components, one we call catfact and another one we call catfactList. Therefore, we create a new directory called components within our source folder and create a new file for each of the intended components. First, we write a very simple component called catfact. In order to import the component later on, we use the export default keyword and then declare a functional component by using the function keyword. The return value of a functional component can be considered the result of its rendering function. Each component must return a single node. Thereby, the simplest functional component looks something like this. To use our newly created functional component, we have to add and import it in the sample page we created earlier. We can import the component from .components slash catfactlist. To be a valid node, we may either self-close the node or add another one behind it that closes the tag. But it's common practice to self-close nodes whenever applicable. If we now look at our app, we see nothing, as our component does not yet return anything but an empty node. Let's change that by adding a level 1 heading to our catlist component. Now we add and import our catfact component within our catfact list to nest the components. This again doesn't change anything, as our catfact component returns nothing yet. Let's change this as well by adding a static cat fact that applies at all times. Cats are assholes. To make a quick rewrap of what we did so far, our app.tsx imports the cat fact list, whereas the cat fact list has a heading and uses the cat fact component in turn, which returns cats are assholes. Let's adjust our example app somewhat more and add some dynamic data instead of a static cat fact. Therefore, we utilize the interface concept of TypeScript and define an interface called iCatFact. It consists of a single attribute, fact, which is of the string type. Using this interface within the signature of our cat fact component, we may now destructure an attribute fact. This will result in the component to expect this attribute as an argument. If we try to destructure another attribute called cat from our interface, TypeScript will underline this and tell us that the property cat does not exist on the type iCatFact. This is a major advantage of using TypeScript over JavaScript, as many errors may be found long before they are ever interpreted. And this is the point we make use of a cool JSX feature. We simply use a JavaScript variable within our HTML code by using the fact we destructured from an object of the form iCatFact. Looking at our app, React will tell us that the property fact is missing on our catfact within our catfact list. To resolve this, we need to add the property fact to the node and provide the fact as a string. The component does now the same thing as before, but we may influence its rendering by providing an argument. To speed things up a bit, 
we now jump straight into the concepts of states and hooks. These two are the most influential concepts behind React and made it that popular in my opinion. A state in React holds information or data that is used within a specific component. A component may possess multiple states. Whenever a state of a component changes, the component will be re-rendered. To make re-rendering an efficient process, states are immutable by default. To change a state, one must use its setter. When we use the useState hook of React, we get two objects in return, a state and a setter for the state. You may choose the names as you wish, but by convention, you use a name in lower camel case and append the prefix set for its setter. The useState hook also supports generics. We will use a list of iCatFact as our generic type for the cat facts. To do so, we must ensure the interface is exported in the catfact.tsx file. The useState hook also takes an initial state as an argument. We are going to provide a single cat fact as the initial state. TypeScript is going to complain because it expected a list of iCat facts and we provided a list of strings. To solve this issue, we must bring our object to the form of iCat fact iCatFact is an object with a single attribute fact that is of the string type. In order for our fact to comply with this structure, we must make an object of this form of it. Now we can make use of the map method of JS. For each of our entries in catFacts, we want to create an instance of the catFact component. The map method will pass all attributes of each entry in catFacts as the constructing arguments for the catFact component. Our app now looks as before, but the data for the cat facts is stored within the cat fact list component. And we may easily extend the facts by adding another item to the initial list. Let's remove our static data and add some real world data. We are going to use a public API called Meow Facts, which is running somewhere on Heroku. There's a long list of free and publicly available API resources on GitHub you may use for your personal projects. Looking at the sample response of the API, we see that the response consists of a single attribute called data that contains a list of cat facts. To properly work with this data, we define an interface iMeow fact response that describes the response object. Then we fill our cat facts with facts from the API in four steps. First, we get the JSON part of the response and tell TypeScript to handle it as a promise of the iMeow fact response type. Secondly, we extract the data from the JSON. Then we transform the list of strings into a list of objects conforming with the iCatFact interface. And as the last action, we take this transformed data and set it as the catFact state by using the setCatFacts method. Looking at our app, we see nothing changed as we did not define any trigger for the function yet. To trigger the function when loading the component, we make use of another React hook called useEffect. The useEffect hook takes two arguments. First, a function that is triggered, and secondly, an array of dependencies. Dependencies may be other states or objects, for example. Whenever one of the dependencies changes, the function will be triggered. Leaving the dependencies empty will result in a default behavior that triggers the function once when the component was mounted. Adding a call for the getCatFacts method to the useEffect will add 5 catFacts to our catFact list component. This concludes our React TypeScript essentials. But how to continue from here? Here are three resources I urge you to look into if you want to professionalize your React experience. Number 1. Next.js Next.js in contrast to React is a framework and it fills all the gaps React as a library has, such as page and API routes or server-side rendering support. Number 2. Tailwind CSS Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework. It redefines the way developers write and interact with CSS and comes with beautiful defaults. Number 3. TenStack Query TenStack Query is a declarative and automatic query client with features like caching, parallel requests, polling and real-time queries or even offline support. If you like this video, please support us by subscribing to our channel. To get notified on new videos, you may also enable the notifications.